Richardson and we continue with our few minutes uh, series uh, in this 24-hour marathon. If you happen to be looking at the marathon when this is uh, first shared uh, over the YouTube system, uh, we continue on with the Spirit Field John. And we're in uh, the first chapter. We read a part of this in the last session, breaking the breaking of 400 years of silence. We want to talk about Spirit Field John. And so we're going to begin in verse 14. It says, uh, to his father, these words from the angel to his father say this, you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, speaking of John the Baptist. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. We want to talk about this spirit filled John. Of course, those of you who've been around, you know, you're very comfortable with God's word. And you know quite a bit about it. You know the, 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 the full launching of the church. Uh, some people call it the book of Acts, in fact. Uh, the act of the Holy Spirit, acts of the apostles, acts of the church. Uh, the, all of those are synonymous. They would all be correct. And yet here, though the Holy Spirit has not yet been uh, uh, initiated in terms of his administration quite yet, we can see from time to time in this specific circumstance that this John, who is born to Zechariah and Elizabeth, Zechariah the priest and Elizabeth, at an age when they cannot have children is spirit-filled. And then also, uh, Zechariah would understand completely when he's told that he's not to ever touch wine or alcoholic drinks, understanding it's not necessarily a Nazarite, Nazarite vow, vow per se, but it's very close to that, that he's, supposed, he's to be dedicated, he's to understand that he is dedicated to a very special service in the Lord, to a very special time, and to a very special place in the Lord, and that he will be a person that is going to help to begin turning the tide for Israel, and not only for Israel as it is shared there, but for all persons, he will begin to be that one who will begin to turn the tide. Some people say that John is the one who breaks the 400 years of silence because he comes as a prophet, no doubt. No voice was heard from Malachi all the way to John, and yet these words are being told to Zechariah before John is even born. How can that be? When you know already an angel is coming, and that here comes a, a, an extraordinary birth in people, in a woman that could not have a child, and a man who is old, and a woman who is old, here comes a birth. Wow. Sounds like something that's practically Abrahamic. I say that a little tongue-in-cheek. Father, we thank you, Lord, for spirit-filled John as he prepares. He's already spirit-filled and ready to do what you have him to do. Bless his praise and glory.